Hello everyone, this is the uh, third game that I'm casting. I think this is like the fifth, eighth game total of the uh, Horus Moneybags, uh, Rise of the Witch King, Weekend Extravaganza. Um, this is going to be a uh, one-off game again, of course, between uh, Cookie, Aardvark, Explosive, and Protoss are on the good team, and then Bonsi Terror and New on the evil team. Let's get started. We are... Starting with a explosive start in the eastern side of the map, we are seeing Terror and New go in on uh, Dogul Door. Um, friend will actually get a little bit focused. I think actually Friend will could have went down there if New actually committed, but not quite. Hard to say, of course. But as the old resident five minute Amar, uh, I would always get kills out uh, on Friend will in the east. So I think people are typically not quite prepared in, at the start of the game for these. So um, if you catch the elves off guard, it's very easy to pick off a squishy hero like Vanderbilt or even Gladril. Regardless though, new play uh, a bit safer, probably still like a respectable choice. Um, and we do not see a death on the eastern front just yet. Uh, good fast responses by Protoster does uh, prevent the possibility of an actual follow up onto actually killing Lothlorien. Although we do see a couple cannons die, not too many. Also see Cookie going in on uh, roll shots for some reason. Um, this is interesting. I think Cookie kind of does this often. Um, it's a very uh, farming centric elves mentality, but it typically does actually work out pretty decent. We also see Arvar grabbing the uh, first gas on Orphink. Uh, I assume he's going for um, Kuranir, which is a pretty um, respectable buy, I would say, all around. Not too much to really speak on it. We also see a um, preemptive double, I think, on Left Nui and indeed Misty Bonsi is going in, and Terror are actually going in on Cardolan instead. So they're splitting their pushes instead of concentrating on a double. Uh, which is interesting because there is no second ARB at the, uh, Western Gondor. Typically, there will not be a second ARB at Western Gondor at this point in the game. Uh, meanwhile, we do see uh, New in the West facing off against Protoster. Argolab is a little bit overexposed here, as well as Arbalag, actually, but no actual hero kills happening here. You always have to be a little bit careful about Carping pushing your squishy ranged heroes out into front, especially Arbalag, or even Argolab because he's a bit slow. Meanwhile, we do see Peror actually uh, going in on Amon Laha, so that is their angle right now. Bonsi and Peror splitting their attacks. Uh, good call by Bonsi, by the way. He recognizes that uh, since Terror has already started his push over here, um, he doesn't need to sit around and just like face into Western Gondor because he knows that um, there's probably no Arb in the area for Ardvark to respond in a timely manner. Or I might just be thinking too much into it, I'm not quite sure. Um, granted, though, Laha did not lose too much because uh, I think this Terror didn't really have the mass cover to uh, effectively prevent that. Meanwhile, we see Explosive actually already in position to defend Eastern Tharbad. Um, Terror is going in, um, might be grabbing, yeah, I think he's going to grab this frontal cannon, and then that is probably going to be the spawn uh, left for dead. There's not really too much you can do, especially with Khan's armaments after the other frontal um, cannons go down. <laughs> we also see, though, Minhiriaf being focused down by Bonsi. I don't know if this is from a deny Giriflin angle or just like a kill Minhiraf in general angle. This always happened before Giriflin was a thing, so it could be either. A good, 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 good uh, pullback micro by Bonsi. He deliberately leaves Smaug moving forwards and uh, baits, I guess kind of baits, uh, Explosive into chasing into the other heroes. Gets Explosive to take a bit more damage than he otherwise would have. Kind of a nice micro optimization there. Meanwhile, we have over here at the south side of Lothlor and Terror trying to go in for a bottom clear. Um, really trying to grab that positional um, kill right here, I'd assume. But I don't think they're actually going to go for a east build of any sort. What would be really funny though this tournament is if somebody went for Easterling Coalition. Please, please, please. That would be really funny and really fun to watch, even if it'll be like a five minute game. Morgamir does get chased down by Franduel. Um, with that double, actually, by Protoser and you. That might be Witch King going down as well. Volley comes out, takes out the Witch King as he's trying to run away. That is both melee heroes on the new ball destroyed. Cookie with the pretty good call timing and really good positioning. Not missing a beat going into double Eastern Rudar with Explosive. That is some really, really nice momentum uh, preservation, I will say. 
Meanwhile, we do see Terror taking out um, Minhiriaf, and at this point, um, you just can't push anymore. Like, um, Arfidane is basically invulnerable for the rest of this game. You need a bit of allied power to really push through at this point. We also see Terror uh, still gassing Eastern Rudar, even though it's about to die. I think he just doesn't really notice. Um, it is like second gas of the game, anyways. And meanwhile, we do see uh, Wayne Rider and Cameron dying to a double with Protoss, or lots of um, doubles actually by good this game on like these uh, undefended minor spawns. Paying off very well, but we might see a Ardvark Ard going down. Indeed, we do. Yep, at this point, it kills all the guaranteed, and we do see that western side of Gondor kind of exposed for the rest of the game. Explosive on us here. Almost dying, but not quite. Hwalder does not have to speed. I think actually Hwalder kills him if he keeps running. Alstir is uh, quite a bit slower than Hwalder. Let me write down the uh, Bonsi kill on the Ardvark Arb. You see also Eastern Rudar being finished off over there. Nazgul comes out on Mount Gundabad, so Misty gets the first Nazgul of the game instead of funding. Adunabeth on Bonsi. Okay, okay, okay. Arb kill Bonsi. Yeah, it's looking right now to be pretty grim for evil already. Good has had a very, very explosive start over here. Um, Cookie has been instrumental in kind of like maintaining that momentum in the early game that uh, evil, the good needs to uh, not only like push away evil and prevent their progress, but also like make your own progress. Eastern Brudar was a marvelous transition. Now we are going to see Western Brudar probably falling here, and Bonsi actually going for the play of not finishing off Western Brudar, but actually taking this little gap um, that he has to take out a couple of the cannons to the east over here. But oh, Rogash might be going down. Yes, he does to that Ranger of the North from Fortification. So um, just barely doesn't live there. Bonsi also loses a medic to Protosser's cannon, so Protosser, medic kill. Our allies are being attacked. Medic wife dead, yep. Got. Oh, true, yeah, you, you gotta use the scientific term for these healers. They're not, uh, they're not medics, they're, um, wives. We see Terror grabbing Alatar after his Naz was denied. Indeed, it's very often not really the best play to grab a Nazgul at the markup after you lose your Nazgul base. Just because I feel like at this point, like, some kind of people forget about it existing just because it's, like, never actually bought. Like, um, it really, really weakens the Nazgul if you have to pay an extra 2k for it. Technically, it's 1700, but, you know. Um, meanwhile, Cookie is actually over here defending Western Rudar for, from you. He's just kind of everywhere this game. It's very interesting to see. Kind of what happens, I guess, when uh, Misty's don't really attack uh, elves at all. I guess they did grab e uh, Elven King's Halls, but at this point, Bonsi's just kind of running around the map. Which, granted, not like a misplay on his part, I'm just like, kind of noting. Bonsi now going in on Minhiriaf alongside Terror. Uh, I think they are really trying to go for that Gareth from Deny Angle. Meanwhile, we do see Golfing Bull dying to. Um, Arpening up here, Protoss are up here, and that is going to be basically Amar taking out of the game. Expo, uh, not Expo, um, Terror and Bonsi are going to have to really do a lot of heavy lifting to, uh, to like, salvage this game from, uh, this jaw of defeat. They might be able, if they play this very aggressively and greedily, to finish off Aaronborn in this push. Uh, but that does kind of involve Explosive not really doing a lot in terms of, um, actual aggression and like poking and now with Co uh, cookie also coming down here they do need to run away that might actually be smell going down but no he actually activates the uh speed moot lord almost gets uh i thought he almost got cliffed there almost dies actually but not quite evil does manage to evacuate but not without uh not killing Aaronborn, which is probably a little less progress than they would need uh, very interestingly though, it's only the 13 minute mark, so much has happened this game already, but it's actually not that late into the game. Your viewer also goes down to Aardvark, very very fast plays by Good over here, uh, picking out all of the necessary EM spawns to focus. Um, after Dunlin dies in this push probably, it's going to be ended wife by itself, and I guess central. Uh, Ardvark calls out he's going to be staying in at all game, so yeah, probably EM is going to be killed, and with a functionally hero dead, um, Amar, that's not a good sign for EM, for Amar, or just the good evil team in general. 
we are going to also see a Bonsi push on the Fornos, but with no actual allied support, I don't really think this is worth the uh, cost in the mass. Like, that opportunity cost is pretty steep. You, As, like, when you're behind like this, you really cannot be wasting your, like, limited pushes. Um, given that uh, if you think of like mass as kind of like a currency that you use on pushes, you really don't want to be using your like limited currency on this. Gorko barely dies. I think that was like 50 HP or less. Holy cow. Yeah, I think it was like 30 HP even, like almost 20. I don't know. But that's barely not losing Gorkill there. This is not a good look for the evil team right now. And they might be grabbing Negotiate for Elven Knowledge as well. That's one of the best wind harder uh, buys in the game I think. If Elves and Cardo are relatively untouched, it just makes their um, armies oppressive to fight. One card all, yep indeed they're grabbing Negotiate, that's the wind harder buy. They're really trying to close this game out fast it seems. Oh my god, they're going for Riot as well. All of the run harder buys. They're just really kicking evil while they're down. Yep, fun elf all 1k ride. They are doing it. Arb is arriving. They just gotta cover this little area a little bit. They cover this little area a little bit. And it's all but guaranteed to go off. Like, evil does not have any strength whatsoever to contest this. They're trying to go for Tharbad here, but look at that little patch of mines. Gotta be careful, or lest they lose all their medics. And indeed, Hero might be losing a medic if he's not careful here. Yeah, they just, Evil just cannot push. I think this is GG already. I think this was GG five minutes ago, even. And yeah, they're starting the negotiations internally. It really just... What can you do at this point? Oh, Gorkill goes down for Huntmaster, at least. Although, that's probably actually losing for Evil. And oh, Goblin King might be going down here if they're not careful. But no, not quite. Explosive doesn't really have the heroes in position to carry that out. Tower loses a medic to, I think, effectively Cookie, kind of explosive, but those are just cannons. I'm going to give it to Cookie. The Arb. And now what? Like, they can push into here, try and make a push, but like, with Cookie here, and his state, and all those mines here, and Explode here, there's no way they push into this. And yeah, they're just calling GG. And look at that, a decisive beatdown by the forces of good and that we see will be uh this third game very quickly ended uh welcome everyone to the uh fourth larry hosted game of the rise um weekend tournament Mon money bags extravaganza whatever it is called uh what we have for this game this lineup is explosive on arfadang protoss are on elves uh, what is it? Babs on Cardolan and Bonsi on Western Gondor. Meanwhile, we do have Terror on the Misty Mountains, Cookie on Angmar, and of course, Aardvark on EM. And look at this, we do see Cookie going in on Lothlorien at the start of the game, just barely not finishing off, but all those cannons are already almost dead, so that is probably a Lothlorien almost guaranteed to die in the second push. Explosive did get there pretty fast, so good teamwork but on his uh, point. Like, if he didn't arrive there in time, he would have just uh, lost Lothlorien. But Cookie's damage has been done. Unless Nenya comes out, oh my gosh, okay. Protoster denies the eventual Lothlorien kill with that. What an explosive start already. Um, I, I guess we've seen more explosive starts, but definitely pretty close there. Good, good, good movement and positioning by explosive to get there in time. Now Cookie gets Nenya dropped on him as he's pushing the spawn. Also, Kabul gets dropped over here. Not the best for him. Also, Morgamir almost going down. And oh my gosh, Cookie is now kind of uh, gimped for the late game, especially now that he's about to lose. Not Morgamir, but he does lose a medic. What a close engagement. 67 HP on Morgamir. That was close. That was really reckless by Cookie going back in like that. Down Kamul, plus one medic. Explo. What a explosive start already indeed. Explo, one medic. What else are we watching over here? Um, the tree hurts. Yeah, that tree, that tree has killed so many. Like, I think over the course of Ryze's lifespan, probably killed like 50 heroes. 
Meanwhile, we see Explosive going here, taking out a couple mass bits on uh, Ram. Uh, we are seeing a second gas starting, so Cookie is just full uh, going in on Gram, grabbing the, the Riders amount Gram, Marauders amount Gram path. Meanwhile, we do see Terror going in over here, trying to take out Minhiraf at Babs. Uh, Babs calls out that Misty's over here. Where are the Arbs of the team? Oh, there's not a lot of Arbs in the area. Actually, no. Protoster is over here, kind of disguised by the Elder Pink. So Elves is going to push away this uh, Misty attack, no, but not before Misty grabs a couple cannons. Now, this is an interesting one. Witch King Empowerment. Instead of grabbing the Nazgul, he goes for Witch King Empowerment. That's an interesting one. I, I would say if you're down a Medic and a Hero... Actually, yeah, because he's down the Medic, I think actually an Empower is not the worst play here. I kind of put, would have preferred Morgamir, honestly, because it, he's a lot easier to micro now that you're down a hero. But, you know, Witch King is all the... If Witch King is in vogue right now, the Banshee Scream, so... I'm not super surprised that people are going for it. Do you want to see, like, at least one or two, like, Morgamir empowers this tournament, though? Or this series, uh, whatever it is. Meanwhile, we have... Rolshaw's being sieged down over here. We have Protosser. Ooh, almost losing Durin, actually. He has to be careful. He has to be careful! Okay. He almost lost Durin to can cannons there. That was like... That was close. That was almost really bad for him. That would have been very embarrassing. But he just narrowly misses getting killed by that. Meanwhile, we got Protosser taking out this uh, fortification to finish it off. Cleaning up this top area makes it pretty easy for him to drop in on Central Camp and Ended Wife. Kind of puts a lot of pressure on evil men. Uh, tell Babs to move uh, the spy over to over here. Yeah, uh, Babs is a little bit of a newer player. I think he is like mostly a splitty main, but he actually has pretty decent micro if I remember correctly. Just like obviously since he plays mo mostly split, he's not super familiar with the Rise meta. But it seems like he is actually pretty capable, pretty communicative. That is always a good sign. Meanwhile, we see Terror actually going down on Bonsi here. That's a little bit of a forward recall, but Bonsi doesn't quite get punished for it. And now he can chase away Smell with his low-ish HP. Also, he gets forced to recall over to Amon Laha, though. Uh, let's Terror kind of come in. Rotoster recalls in to chase away Terror. Uh, but Explo also recalls in to chase away Terror. And yeah, a little bit of a redundant uh, recall over there, a bit of a redundant rotate. But regardless, not the worst. Cookie actually going in on uh, Lon Dyer for some reason. That's an interesting one. Um, Babs is in the area, and since he's only a three hero hero ball on Cookie, I think Babs has a decent chance of fending this off. He has to be very careful though, because that is like a Witch King that's pretty strong. Uh, we also do see a third gas Marauders on a Mount Graham being a finished soon in a minute and a half. Meanwhile, we see Protoss are going in on the south side of the central and white frame camp. We also see uh, Terror uh, attacking over here by Tharbad. Not anything super exciting, kind of like the uh, general, like, you know, like meta targeting, I would say. Also see uh, Cookie... I'm not sure what Cookie's doing, honestly. Um, yeah, um... I don't know, the transition Nicardo is quite interesting. It's definitely uh, due to like the fact that he can't push explosive anymore. Like losing Kamul is probably the worst hero to lose on your ball. Like by far. You really need that ranged uh, damage on a, a two range hero hero ball. Also he deals splash. He's like all of your anti-mass ability. And that actually might be why Cookie transitioned over to Witch King, because uh Witch King has a lot more um, mass clear when he's empowered than you would expect just off of his charge being able to one shot a ton of mass uh, with that splash. Also we do see Amal Ha going down to Ardvark farming a bit of money there. He is pretty stripped on the Wing Rider and Camel so he does want to be careful. Meanwhile actually you're actually going to go down to Cookie. He is trying to farm this. I'm not sure if he's uh, just farming for Marauders. I also don't think actually it's the right call anymore to Marauders just because Ram is getting so exposed and it's not really worthwhile to get Marauders without the rest of the spawn's benefits. ZZZ, he got Aduna. Who got Aduna? Um, yeah, Terror got Aduna. Amar Special Transport goes down to North as Cookie loses Morgamir to that explosive fight. And oh, Carping runs back in, but 
it doesn't quite matter as actually no Carpane's about to die. No, he's not about to die because he has the same speed as the Witch King. And with arrows, despite Carpane going down, it doesn't matter because Explosive wins that fight with an arm kill, two heroes for one. What a play by Explosive. Now, just like last game, Cookie, uh, our Amar is left on one hero. Um, yeah, basically faction dead. Um, now, Graham, you know, he gets pretty respectable mass from Graham. But uh, at this point, given Explosive's position and the, given the rotational nature of his team, I don't expect Graham to live much longer. There are going to be friends coming up, rolling up to that spawn very soon as we speak. I assume at least. Where are the herbs are actually? Protoster, I think, is going north. We'll have to see. Plus one arb. Yep. Explo. Medic. Explo. Arb. Wait, was that another arb? Was that both arbs? Oh my god, that was both of Amar's arbs. And just like that, Amar's basically out of the game. No arbs, one hero. Exposed spawn. Down to medic earlier as well. He grabs marauders, but he cancels it because, yeah, like... If you're about to lose the spawn, I don't think Marauders just for the hero buffs is worth it. That's 5k for a hero buff. That's like not really seen anywhere else in the game and in any context is viable. Like uh, the Nandor training on Mirkwood is a very strong hero buff for 3k and nobody ever gets that um, because like it's basically 3k for just the hero buff in most games and that's just like not worth it. And take some more. Adrigal taking a bit of damage. Uh, Great Goblin also being pushed back a little. We are seeing another left wing gas. Oh crap, Bonsi went autonomy. I didn't notice this. Uh, that was first gas left wing though, so I'm not really sure if that's really uh, the best for him. He actually did delay autonomy again. Uh, we've been seeing a lot of delayed autonomies uh, this, uh, this series, which is quite interesting. Uh, I think he tried to... I think that's one or two gas orphink, and yeah, he's going for, he's trying to go for max on left wing. It's going to take him uh, seven more minutes from now, 20 minute mark. Can we trust left wing to live till the 20 minute mark? I don't know. Um, are, it, with a dead Amar, maybe, like that means uh, Explosive can like just kind of camp over here. Indeed, he does have his arb over here. I think he did signal to his team that he wants to, that to happen. <clears throat> Meanwhile... Gas plus Marauder. Yeah, I think that was like pretty um, obvious to Explosive earlier. He just like just called it out now for his team. Yeah, I think we've been seeing like Ram Gas every single game this uh, series. I might be wrong. I haven't been paying that much attention, but oh crap, Cookie did get Marauders. He's trying to make this live longer. I mean, he has a chance of having it live for a while, but I don't know. I think that was not the play because Ram just dies very soon. There's no way a good lets it live much longer. Well, if we look at the chances for Evil to deny the left way upgrade, we do see Terror coming in. Uh, has he communicated with EM at all? No, Artvark is not moving his Arbin, so this is going to be a solo push that is almost definitely going to get countered by Babs and Explosive. Left Noe is being gassed a bit more. Oh, our Adra Hill getting quite low! Bossy moves Adder Hill into the hero ball by mistake and does lose that hero. He might also be losing that RB if he's not careful. But now Babs and Explosive come in and converge on his position to chase him away. Still pretty bad for Bonsi. Adder Hill is a very important hero, but it's it's salvageable. It's it, it, Bonsi can tank that loss and not really uh, be crippled for it. He can definitely do a lot of stuff later on in the game. Special transport being pinged over here as Elves comes in with explosive to try and finish off Graham, it seems. We are going to maybe see the three fortifications pop in in the middle of this fight if it gets really prolonged, but most likely. Um, I don't. I think. Uh, does Graham die in this push? I don't think so. Uh, explosive's in a bad position. Argla might be going down. Galadriel goes down. Randall goes down. And almost Malvagil. Not quite, though. That is swingy. Arvalet goes down. He gets missed in the recall. Three for two. Yeah, that's the thing, right? When you're just ahead in the game, you can take three for twos and it benefits you. You're like, three for twos are winning. Oh, that's no longer winning. Uh, with Malvigil dead. Yeah, that's, okay, that's no longer winning. A four for two is not really that good. But like, yeah, when you get to like this point in the game where like you have a dead faction on your team, taking a three for two as like the winning team is actually really bad for um, evil here. 
Um, but at the same time, two heroes go down for Misty. I think that seals the game. That that makes it so that there's like one potential carry faction left on Evil, and also he's lost the hero anyways. I think that makes it GG. There's no, I don't think they can come back from this at this point. Like especially with autonomy, uh, Gondor. And yet we're starting to see guaranteed a sanctity, the forest getting gassed, potentially coming up in the next uh, three minutes. Oh wait, no, five minutes. Or no, six minutes. I, I can't do math right now. And yeah, they're going for a Martel Rush. Lots of really creative buys uh, by good these games. Left Nui might actually get denied, but no, the Terror does not have the strength. He lost two heroes, so... Like, Bonsi alone... I don't think Bonsi alone can beat him off, but like... With like two friendly arbs in the area, there's no way he gets that Left Nui kill. Babs is also putting up very nice work, just containing Cookie. Like, uh, going for the safe gas of Barrows first, I think it's very often, like, undervalued. We also do see Martel being funded for in Rush, so that we're gonna see Martel at the 30 minute mark. Or actually, uh, 27 minute mark. So making just, again, any further progress by Evil just all the more harder. Like, what do you do as Evil here? I don't think you can do anything. I'm just kinda waiting for them to come to the conclusion that it's kinda unwinnable and tap out. Have to see, though, if, um, that's what they're gonna do. Remember, you can also just call it for them if you want at any point. Yeah, it's like I don't know. I'd, I'd rather not call it for them unless it's literally like dragging out unnecessarily, or like for no, for like into a super long game, and like it's no longer fun to watch. But I think it's still kind of fun to watch right now. Yeah, we're still like value to casting it. Absolutely, it's your call. Uh, Aaron Bourne is gonna die from the south. This is interesting. You don't really see a lot of like uh, evil players like trying to drop in for Aaron Bourne from the south these days. Also, I will say it's so nice being able to see past trees at this now. Like I, me realizing that was an option was such so good because in the olden days you would see like nothing behind these trees. Oh, Glorfindel might be going down over here, but I don't think actually Ardbrick has the speed on his heroes. Maybe if he does calm the Wayne Rider's uh, Vigor of Rune to get the speed boost, but even then, I think he would need two autos and it's not enough. Actually, three autos. Fixed fund Angmar all. Alright, we are seeing a potential attempted deny of Left Nui. They still have a lot of time in the uh, gases, so actually they might be able to get this off. That's a ton of mass they're devoting to this, like basically the entire game's worth of mass from uh, Dravior. Bonsi's doing his best over here, Explosive is doing his best over here, but Explosive is down, like all of his heroes, so I don't think it's gonna matter. That is going to be despawn denied, but Smaug also goes down, Gorgil goes down, Left Nui doesn't actually die yet, lives on 112 HP, and that's gonna be the game over. Like, come on. That last attempted Hail Mary, like, didn't even pay off. I thought they would at least get the spawn, but no. And that's a GG, another decisive win for good very early in the game.